君もそう思わないか千空<笑>相当やべえぞこいつ Hello everybody, Megazard Action, and I'm back again to give y'all my third review over episode 3 of Dr. Stone, Weapons of Science. And if you hadn't already checked out my episode 2 review of Dr. Stone, you can go ahead and click that card in the corner to check that video out, and then come back and watch this video. As for this episode review, man, this episode was something else. This Zukasa guy is insane. I'm just basically going to call this guy Tarzan on steroids, because this dude is an absolute beast. I'm not even sure how Senku and Taiju are going to be able to manage to beat this guy, but we'll be going over all of that today and their best chance of success in today's video. So go ahead and grab your stone tablet and get your chisel ready to take some notes as we go over this recent episode of Dr. Stone. This episode picks up immediately after where episode 2 ends. Although Senkun refuses Sukasa's offer to purify humanity, he still knows the strongest high schooler is too much of a threat. He hopes Sukasa will stay under control until he learns about the revival fluid. Taiju abruptly arrives on the beach and reveals that the batch of miracle fluid for Yuzuru is ready, stunning Senkun with his horrible timing. Sukasa asks about the liquid and Senkun tells him that he'll get an explanation back at camp. Back near that great tree, Senkun reveals there's just not enough fluid. Taiju volunteers to go get more, but Tsukasa decides it's better for him to go instead. Senkun used this as a diversion to get Tsukasa away, even at the cost of revealing the location of the cave. He acts quickly to formulate the proper liquid, confusing Taiju. Senkun explains he doesn't have an interest in Tsukasa's pure world, and Taiju understands that something happened between them. Tsukasa isn't just a good guy, he's a murderer. Senkun makes Taiju pour the liquid on his crushed stone body. He explains the liquid takes time to react, but when it does, it creates a cascading effect that releases Yuzuro's entire body from the stone. They have a heartfelt reunion, but Senkun interrupts because the couple must choose between either running away or staying to fight against Tsukasa. Tsukasa suddenly returns and claims he's calling the tainted adults and not murdering them. In reality, he's not even hiding his murderous intent from Taiju and Yuzura. Taiju decides he must stop the strongest high schooler here and now. He charges to him, forcing Senkun to back him up with a crossbow he developed in secret. Tsukasa snatches the arrow out of the air and delivers a powerful knee to Taiju's head. Somehow, Taiju is the first person to remain on his feet after taking one of Tsukasa's hits. Taiju claims that he doesn't hit people and offers to let Tsukasa hit him in exchange of sparing humanity. Tsukasa doesn't understand the bargain and the fight comes to an abrupt end and Taiju suddenly passes out. Senkun decides they must pretend to run away while searching far and wide for weapons of science to fight back against the strongest human currently alive. They must develop weapons before Tsukasa finds them or it's game over. They travel for over 6 hours but get slightly lost while searching for the materials they need. Without proper GPS or landmarks, it seems improbable to find the current path. However, Yuzura recognizes the great Buddha statue that remains since it was built from copper. They take the night to rest and continue traveling in the morning. Meanwhile, Tsukasa becomes aware of the stakes after seeing through Senkun's ruse. Senkun and the group eventually reach hot, a hot springs and he reveals that they're going to make gunpowder to fight back against Tsukasa. And that is where the episode ends. So overall, this episode really starts to pick up steam and we knew from the last episode that things were going to get pretty heated. My general hunch of Tsukasa was just about right and the fact that he isn't purely evil but he has his own goal and vision of how humanity should be from this point forward. I can see and somewhat understand the motive that Tsukasa has 
because if you had just innocent kids that haven't been exposed to the corrupt world we live in today, it could save us many problems. However, humanity as a whole hasn't changed in terms for their desires and wants from this world. So even if Sukasa were to succeed in this goal, I imagine it wouldn't take long before this new world would be something similar of that of what it used to be. It's unfortunate that Taiju had some terrible timing in this episode when he revealed the secret of the miracle fluid, which is that nitric acid that comes from the bats in that cave that helps revive petrified people. But I imagine that it wouldn't take long for Tsukasa to piece together these puzzle pieces as to how Sinkun is managing to do all of these things. So after Tsukasa volunteered to get some more revival fluid, and when I mean volunteer, I mean yank that poor boy's collar, Senku managed to work quickly to get Yuzura resurrected, and finally Taiju can rest in peace. However, it didn't last that long. When Tsukasa returned, I knew some crap was about to go down, and boy was I right. This heated clash between ideals of Tsukasa versus the rest of Senku's group wasn't really going anywhere, and the fact that he threatened to kill Yuzura at one point was definitely not reassuring. So whenever Taiju and Tsukasa were about to fight, Taiju rushed towards him and Sinkun pulled out that secret crossbow that he's been working on and it didn't even phase Tsukasa. This freaking Tarzan on steroids grabbed that arrow out of the air faster than a child jumping out of bed on Christmas morning and knee Taiju in the face until the middle of next week. After seeing this display of power, I was thinking to myself, there's no way on this green earth they're going to be able to stop this freaking nature. So once Tsukasa left the camp for a while, Senkun decided to leave a false trail to trick Tsukasa to not give away his brilliant plan he was thinking of next. Long story short, Senkun, Taiju, and Yuzura left several hours away from their home to collect that gunpowder to take down this new King Kong. Now, the fact that they had to jump from the Stone Age technology to the near modern times to take down this Tarzan freak really says it all. And despite Sinkun's wonderful idea, Tsukasa being the cunning fox he is immediately recognizes what Sinkun is up to now and he is going to be in for a desperate chase to get to Sinku before Sinkun develops his new weapon. I don't care how strong this ape man is, there is no way this man is going to be able to manage to stop a bullet. If he does, so help me, I, I, I'm just gonna be done with this. Like, like this, this dude, this dude will be completely something else. So things are finally getting heated, and the majority of this episode, I was sitting on the edge of my seat because this was one of the most action and suspense we gotten in this series so far. So this next episode is gonna be one heck of a show. So that is all for my third review of episode three. So I hope y'all really enjoyed it. If you hadn't already done so, make sure you hit that like button if you like this video and hit that subscribe button and that bell to keep up on all things anime that I'm currently reviewing along with any other Nintendo gaming topics I feel like discussing as well. As some of y'all may or may not know, there is no Fire Force Episode 3 review this week due to the episode being postponed. There's the card in the corner so you can check out that video update. But to fill up that void of space, I'm planning on releasing another video instead, so you can look forward to that when that video drops. You can also follow me on social media on Twitter, at Megasar underscore X, just to see what I'm up to from my day-to-day -day life. So make sure you tune in next time for my review of episode 4, Fire the Smoke Signal. So until whatever video I make next, see y'all. <laughs> Kokshok Kayak no Tanjo there.